Bonjour tout le monde, ici Caribou Canadien qui vous parle. J'espère que vous allez bien parce que moi je vais super bien. Allez, pour la première fois sur la chaîne du Caribou Canadien, le jeu Raven, remasterisé live sur la chaîne du Caribou Canadien. Oh yeah! The Raven's Heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. Shh! Calm down. No, a copper. We're on the same side. A copper? What are you doing here? And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off! He's gonna steal the eye. But... how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him, do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest!
Hands up. I don't have time to play. I'm on duty. Il ferait bien partir. My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? From Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. But my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. And what's with the gun? What do you need it for? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. No do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre. And those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. You do know these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old Raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand. It's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But Monsieur, your journey on this train is most unusual. Is it related to the burglary at the British Museum? Not in the least. And the safe? What's that for? I'll let you know if we need your help, Constable. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. Okay. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're guarding something. Oh, really? And what might it be? I really couldn't say. But it must be very important. Why is that? Because you are very important. They wouldn't have assigned the case to you if it were just a trifle. <laughs> Let's assume that we really are transporting something very important on this train. And let's assume that it really is my job to see that it arrives safely. Then why isn't the train crawling with police? It's... it's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, that is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along fine without you. You won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You're in my country. 
and I've been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do, whether you like it or not. Hmm, clever and stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zana. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? <sighs> oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa! It was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. Vous examinez un objet, approchez-vous avec le stick analogique gauche et sélectionnez-les avec le stick analogique droit. Appuyez sur A, sélectionnez le papier sandwich sur la table. This morning I thought I wouldn't be hungry because of all the excitement. Thankfully I bought a sandwich with me anyway. Et bien, à présent, appuyez sur Y pour ouvrir l'inventaire qui contient tous les objets transportés par l'agent de l'avenir. Appuyez le papier de sandwich avec le stick analogique gauche et appuyez sur A pour afficher dans le coin supérieur gauche à l'écran. À présent, vous pouvez utiliser le papier de sandwich avec d'autres objets. Sélectionnez le touche en bas pour poser sur la table. I was so excited this morning that I couldn't eat anything. Needless to say, the second I got into train, I was famished. Fortunately, I bought an apple. I was so ex- Fortunately, I bought an apple. I wrap the apple core in the sandwich paper. That way I can carry it without making a mess of my trouser pocket. Still, I'd prefer not to have to carry them all day. Bien sûr, vous pouvez aussi utiliser les objets entre eux dans l'inventaire. Sélectionnez la serviette à papier avec A, puis sélectionnez le papier serviette dans l'inventaire avec A.
Pumpkin came with a croissant I bought at the train station. A guilty pleasure. I don't need that either. Déparaissons-nous et jetez très tous de votre inventaire dans le cendrier. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. The violinist is a good-looking fellow, and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. But one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Very kind of you. Thanks. Pardon me. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr. Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago. No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? There was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. where you are going of course to Venice I'm going to meet some colleagues there oh Venice a beautiful city or so I'm told indeed but I really have to take my leave now hey, Just one more thing. did you notice anything unusual on the train here on the train no I can't say that I have, although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time, but you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present, and especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just... I I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right, just wait here. He doesn't make a very balanced impression. And he, of all people, isn't bothered by a robbery in his own museum. Perhaps a thoughtful conductor noticed that Professor Lucien wasn't in his compartment and locked it. He doesn't make a, and he of all people isn't bothered by a robbery in his own museum. Professor Lucien? Yes, do you have the key? Actually, I want it. Please, I have to go back to my compartment. The 
little label on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then closed the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At the very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen. When did you... When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich, on the platform. James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything. Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. If I might ask you a few questions about your fellow passengers. I thought he was looking for my purse. James, tell him to look for my purse. The Baroness wishes that you search for her purse. But couldn't we perhaps... All right. First, the purse. I... I will have a look around. Thank you, sir. I don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... <laughs> it's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. A passenger's purse has gone missing. I suppose you haven't seen it. I'm sorry, Constable Zellner. As you know, I only deal with murder, not burglary. Have you asked my boy yet? Maddie is good at finding things. I'll go and do that now. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partout is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No. We are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I traveled to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. 
Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young, but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seemed so eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Scotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. Hmm, maybe if I just suck it. Mr. Zellner. Right, right. How can I help you? Tell me, did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No, just routine. Constable Zellner, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. Le Grand. If you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe, and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. Well, one cannot execute a robbery of that scale without them collateral damage. It seems like the Raven has finally found a worthy successor. We can look forward to new and spectacular coups. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. The cash box in the safe. What do you think it contains? A ruby was stolen in London. One of the legendary Eyes of the Sphinx. The second jewel, an emerald, is rumored to be in a Swiss bank vault, if I remember correctly. Both jewels were supposed to be exhibited together in Cairo for the first time in 50 years. It does make one wonder. Indeed. Your newspaper caught my eye. May I borrow it for a second? You can take the section with the article on the burglary. You're interested in that bit, aren't you? <laughs> you caught me out. Here you go. Dankeschön. There's something else. Do you know where the conductor is? Hmm. I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves and didn't bother getting back on the train. If we don't crack down on vermin like them, the rabble will rule the world one day. Well, at the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He is not here doing his job. That's bad enough. 
I meant to ask, the Baroness is missing her purse. A Baroness? This train is really full of the creme de la creme. The Queen of Crime is over there, and now a Baroness as well. Have you seen the purse? Unfortunately, no. Do you know Lady Westmacott? You were talking to her. Well, I'm an admirer of her work. Like so many others. I once read in the newspaper that only Shakespeare and the Bible sell more copies than her crime novels. I read that too. She must be filthy rich. As a doctor, I'd have to work a thousand years to earn that kind of money. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. I'd better let him read his new... The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, tunnels... No, I'll stay down here. I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No, it's open. Muscle, you feathered fiend! Put the gun down, Robert. If I may introduce... Constable Robert Oliver from the Yard. And this is the revered Constable Zelda of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. And how would I bait my trap then? With an eye? An eye on its way from Zurich to Cairo. <laughs> someone has done his homework. Well done, Constable. I hope you'll acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked, and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Mm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner, be my eyes and ears on the train, and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, monsieur. And then there's the Baroness. She's missing her purse. Baroness von Trebitz? Interesting. Indeed, sir. But it has nothing to do with our case. So I shouldn't concern myself with the matter? Ah, uh, why not? It's your job as a policeman. But don't expect me to be particularly interested in a lost purse. What do you know of this Raven's heir? He tried to blow me up. Rob, we don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new Raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new Raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zellner? Yes? Don't bother us unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exact amount. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. An investigation on behalf of the Grand that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. Hmm. A box with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here.
locked. Bang, bang! <gasps> Don't move! Matt, have you gone mad? I'll shoot! Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too, once you flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh, man. I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. Who'd have thought that one day butterscotch would remind me of my age and of all the things I had to leave behind? pad on which the steward writes orders. Empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard-to-open packages. These days, nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup and small bags. I couldn't believe it. Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. The luck is so cheap that I could easily pick it. If I want to impress Legrand, I should probably just do it. He's famous for his unconventional methods. I need a bit of wire or something like that to pick the lock. Shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become in the last 10 years. I don't need the pad. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down the law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong, fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... he's gone. Ah, I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Very well. Thank you again, Constable. Easily lock the compartment door from inside by turning a little knob. But I didn't lock it. Professor, if you had locked the door from in there, you wouldn't be out here. Uh, that's true. The door is locked. I'm at a loss. Hello, Matt. Oh, come on. 
Are you going to be angry with me for the rest of the trip? Until I get my pistol back. I gave it to your mother. Oh, man. Couldn't you have just raked me over the coals? Would you have learned anything from that? I didn't learn anything from this either. Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. This is the first car. The coal tender should be directly beyond this door, and in front of it, the engine. The large map shows the different routes of the Orient Express. This train began in Paris and ends in Istanbul, as usual. Unfortunately, it will make most of its journey without me. take one if I have trouble. My daughter insisted that I take that with me. She was strongly against this little adventure, but I wasn't about to change my mind. Hello, sir. Hello. If I'm not mistaken, you're a violinist. That's true. A wonderful instrument. The violin music touches the soul. That's why I learned to play it. Do you play in an orchestra? No. Orchestras aren't really part of my world. A solo violinist. The best soloists travel a great deal and make a pile of money. Or so they say. In that case, I'm probably not one of the best. Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at the reception in the Egyptian Museum there. I'm sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is that cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. A passenger is missing her purse. Perhaps you've seen it. So, there are thieves on the train. It's been missing for some time now. Probably since Zuri. <laughs> the Swiss don't let go of money easily, do they? Oh, pardon me. No, I haven't seen the purse. Have a good trip. Thank you. Come on, Matt. Did you really think that you can ignore me for longer than I can ignore you? I'm Swiss. It's practically a national sport. I bought it last week at a flea market. I like it because I suppose. The violinist is a good looking fellow, and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. But one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Matt is digging in his heels. I won't get anything out of him as long as he's angry with me. He doesn't make a very balanced impression. And he, of all people, isn't bothered by a robbery in his own museum. is locked. I'm at a loss without a key or a proper tool. I 
don't believe that... It's no use. The bolt is too short to get a good grip on it. The door is locked. I'm at a loss without a key or a proper tool. First, I'd better see about getting the door open, and then have another talk with the professor. It doesn't seem like I'll get anything out of him as long as the door is still locked. The Baroness seems to have, uh... I better not bother. The Baroness... I better not... Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent, but she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt, and a difficult bus from what they say. the acquaintance of Dr. Gebhardt on the platform in Zurich. I'd better let him read him. Stuart's pencil. The box is secured with a padlock. I won't be able to open it without a key. Inspector Lagrange was quite clear. I'm only to enter the freight car if there's news to report. is digging. I won't get anything up. Would you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. again? Mm -hmm. All right then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. Your mother is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! You and your mother, do you both live on Lady Westmacott's estate? I'm only there for the holidays. Most of the time I'm at boarding school. I imagine that's not very pleasant. No, it's fine. I have friends there. You always have to be so quiet in the lady's house. And I'm not allowed to bring any friends. Such a big house with so many places to hide. And no one to play hide and seek with. You said it. And how long has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him, and hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then Mom fought with him, and he left. I was seven. 
Oh, and uh, how old are you now? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know what you want to be when you grow up? A burglar? <laughs> no, we'll see. Maybe an actor. Really? Well, I don't know. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. I get really deep into my roles, you know? I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> You just have to be good at copying things to be an actor. That... that wasn't bad. Disturbing, but not bad. The Baroness in the second compartment over there is missing her purse. Do you have any idea where it could be? <laughs> Do I ever? Mm -hmm. That guy over there with the violin case? What about him? He picked up something in Zurich and put it in his violin case. Really? Yeah, and he made sure that nobody saw him. But you saw him? Uh-huh. Did you also see what it was? Nah, not really. But now that I think of it, it must have been the Baroness's purse. I should look into it, shouldn't I? I think so. Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Hmm, no. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps, but I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hairpins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Hmm. Thanks for the tip. So long. So longer. Donc c'était tout pour l'aventure du jeu The Raven live sur la chaîne du caribou canadien. Oh yeah